Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and today we're going to take a look at adjusting your Z offset value on your 3D printer. Now, before we get started, if you would, please click that like and subscribe button, and if you have time, leave a quick comment. Those three things really help me with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, that algorithm no longer promotes small channels like this like it used to. Uh, it makes it very difficult to get uh, my videos out there, get new subscribers. So if you are watching this, if you like what you see and you want me to do more videos like this, uh, click that like button, click that subscribe button, and if you got time to leave a few words as a comment, I would really, really appreciate it. It really helps me out. Thank you. Um, not every printer gives you this option in the LCD menu. It's in the firmware. Uh, most newer Creality printers do, uh, Prusa does, uh, Bamboo Labs, any of your better printers or newer of the you know, cheaper ones like Creality, they all give you this ability to do this. Now, on older, like a original Ender 3, if, you, if your nozzle was too close or too far from your print bed, you had to adjust the print bed. You, if in the case of an Ender 3, you would adjust the four corner wheels and raise the bed up or down to get it closer or further away from the nozzle. That is not the case anymore. Now, uh, if your bed is adjustable, you adjust the bed to get it level, but then you go into the LCD menu and adjust the Z offset to fine tune the gap between, for, this is all about the first layer, by the way, but when printing the first layer, the height the nozzle is away from the print bed for beginning to print that first layer. So I've had a number of people uh, message me in the last few weeks asking how to do this and they didn't understand whether they needed a positive number or a negative number. So I just thought it'd be a good idea to do a quick video on this and go over how to do it. I'm going to show this being done on an Ender 3 V3 SE, but it's the same idea for any printer that has a Z offset option in the LCD. Now, um, when your printer homes and you have your uh, home zero for the uh, Z-axis, the nozzle will be above the bed. That is your zero. So if you're wanting to lower your nozzle and get it closer to the bed, it's going to be a negative number. Now, this is the part that confuses people. The higher the number the lower the nozzle will go. And the reason for that is, as you can see on this graphic, the further away from zero you get is a larger number. Minus three is going to be lower than minus two. Minus two is going to be lower than minus one, and minus one is lower than zero. So if you need to get closer to your bed than where you are now, you need to go to a greater number, but it needs to be a negative number. So what exactly are you looking for when doing this? Well. Here's an example of what's happening if your first layer seems really rough. Your nozzle is too close to the bed, and what it's doing is it's depositing the melted filament onto the bed, but at the same time, it's scraping through it. It's not giving the filament enough room to just be deposited. The nozzle is also kind of like dragging a trench through it. So if you have these little trenches, parallel trenches, in the first layer of your print, it means your nozzle is too low and you want to back it off a bit. You want to go to a lower negative number on your Z offset. So if you're at, say, negative 2.1 millimeters, you might go to minus 1.7 or something, but it'll be a smaller number to get you rising up and heading in towards zero. Now, you can also be too high. In this case, the nozzle is too high off the bed for the first layer, and the individual lines of filament that it lays down are not getting squished. Um, in the previous graphic, they were being merged together. In this one, they're not even touching each other side to side. And you don't want this either because it creates a very weak bond with the bed. The print is likely going to break away, and the individual lines of filament don't bond with the uh, adjacent lines of filament. So you don't want this. Uh, if you were to print a first layer like this and pull it off, you could actually pull apart the individual lines of filament just with your fingers. So if the nozzle is too far from the bed, you want to increase that negative number. If you're at uh, minus 1.5 millimeters, you might go to minus 1.7, 1.8, or even minus 1.2, but you want to increase the number to drop that nozzle down. 
ultimately what you're looking for is something like this. You want the individual lines of filament squished enough that they merge into the adjacent line on either side, but you don't want the nozzle dragging through it and creating those trenches that you saw in the first graphic. And it's just something you're going to have to tinker around with and find that perfect number or something close enough to it for your taste um, on your LCD with the Z offset. But this is what you're looking for. Uh, the individual lines of filament are merging, but the nozzle is not so low that it's scraping through them. So what you're going to do, and this is, again, uh, each printer and each firmware is going to be a little different, but this is an Ender 3 V3 SE. And it's going to be pretty much like this on most other printers. But on the SE, you're going to go to your main LCD menu and select Prepare. Then you're going to go down to Z Offset and select that. And you can dial in whatever number you want. And you can even live adjust this while printing. So if you've got a large uh, square or something you want to print that has a large first layer, you can fine tune this as it prints until you find that sweet spot. Once you've found the number you want, you need to go into the control menu and select store configuration so it stores that new Z offset number. Otherwise, as soon as you turn that printer off and back on again, that new value will be lost. So make sure you uh, store that new number once you've found it. And that's it. That's all you've got to do to fine tune your G Z offset. Um, the Ender 3 V3 SE automatically determines the Z offset. Most times it gets it right, but sometimes it's a little bit off and it helps to be able, if you really want to fine tune your printer, to go in and manually adjust this. So that's it. If you would, please click that like and subscribe button and thank you for watching.